Hello, this is Scott at Mechsoft. In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to some of the very nice three-axis milling capabilities found in Visual Mill 2012. This is the demonstration part, and I will create six machining operations that are commonly used to rough finish and semi-finish parts like this that require simultaneous three-axis milling. So I'll go to Visual Mill and bring up the Operations Browser. There are three things that need to be done prior to creating any machining operations. First I'll define the stock material or workpiece shape. The system creates a minimum box around all the geometry. And I'm going to raise up the top just a little bit so I get full cleanup on the part. Next I will define the work zero or program zero. And I'll use the stock box and position it at the highest northwest corner as you'll see on the screen. Finally, I've defined three cutters for this job, two ball mills and a corner radius flat end mill. Each of these cutters has the tool number, feed rates, coolant, and any other parameters already defined. With those tasks done, I'm ready to machine the part. So I want to first rough off most of the material using a flat end mill. I'll go to three axis and select horizontal roughing. This operation will automatically cut all the geometry on the screen, so I don't need to select any geometry here. For the tool, I'm going to use the flat end mill, feeds and speeds, make sure they are loaded from the tool. Cut parameters, uh, I want to leave 0.6 millimeter stock on all, all surfaces, do climb cutting, and the step over will be 50% of the tool diameter. Cut levels, uh, I want 30% of the diameter calculated as the depth of cut in, in Z. And uh, I want to make sure that I clear the flats, because I do have flats uh, in this particular part, and I want to leave that amount of stock on each one of those flats. At that point, I am ready to generate the operation. Now for these tool paths with levels, I can examine each individual level using this function below the browser. I'll simulate this path. In the next operation, I'm going to semi-finish the part by knocking down these larger steps that are formed by the large roughing cutter. And I'm going to use a smaller cutter and I'll go to 3 axis and select the horizontal remachining operation. Again, in this operation, I don't need to select any geometry. I'm going to use a 12 millimeter ball mill and set the cut levels to be 20% of that cutter's diameter. Now I'm ready to generate the operation. Now I'll simulate this path and you'll see that the step over is much finer and that the cutting is localized only to the material that remains after the horizontal roughing. So this is semi-finishing. One of the functions I can point out that is very nice under simulation control is that at any moment I can pause this and say finish the cutting or the display to the end of the path without displaying the tool. In just a few moments, you'll see the finish results, and there it is. That'll save you some time. The next operation will be a finishing operation that will do parallel cuts across the entire face of the part, and that will be uh, parallel finishing. Again, here, no geometry to select. I'm going to use the same 12 millimeter ball end mill and uh, set the step over to be 20% of the cutter. Now I'm ready to generate this operation. I'll simulate this tool path, and remember this is a finishing pass, and it will clean up uh, a lot of the scallops on the front section of the part. And to save time again, I'll pause it and run to the end. And there's the finished results. Now the next finishing operation, I'd like to clean up these scallops that are on the steeper sections of the part. To do that, I'll go to 3 axis and choose Steeps Z Finishing. Here again, all geometry will be considered. 
I'll use the same tool as the parallel finishing and I'm going to set the operation to cut anything steeper than 40 degrees. Now I'll generate the operation. In the next operation, I'm going to use a flat end mill to face off all of these horizontal surfaces, including the parting line. So I'll go to three axis and use flats machining. The system automatically determines the horizontal flat region, so I don't need to select any geometry. But I'm going to use a flat end mill, set the cut parameters to make sure that I have zero stock, and I'm ready to generate the operation. The final operation will be pencil tracing. I'll use a small ball cutter and the system will find all bitangencies on the part and run the cutter along those areas. I'll go to three axis and find pencil tracing. Again, no reason to select any geometry. It's all considered. I'm going to use a six millimeter ball end mill and uh, I want to make sure that the stock is set to zero and I'm ready to generate the operation. I'll simulate this final pencil tracing operation and this will conclude the demonstration on three axis milling. Bear in mind that this is only six of the operations of the available 19 under three axis milling. There's a lot more there to take a look at. Thank you.